tutorial three triggering tutorial three triggering mechanisms previously we looked at the patterns of flow generation by mechanical ventilators and we found that there were three different patterns the first is sinusoidal flow that you see in spontaneously breathing patients who are not getting assistance in inspiration. In volume control ventilation, the most common flow pattern is constant flow, where the flow does not change from the beginning of the breath to the end of the breath. And then in pressure control ventilation, and in some settings on volume control, a decelerating flow pattern is seen where the flow is highest at the beginning of the breath and lowest at the end of the breath. In this tutorial, I will discuss how mechanical ventilators trigger, in other words, how the machine knows it's time to give the patient a positive pressure breath. And I look at initially time triggering, and then we'll talk about the more sophisticated triggers that are pressure and flow triggers. So triggering is how the ventilator cycles to inspiration. On control mechanical ventilation, triggering of the mandatory breath is always based on time. Time triggering means that at a pre-specified interval, the ventilator delivers a mandatory breath irrespective of patient effort, although the patient may synchronize with an assisted breath. For example, if you dial up 10 breaths per minute, the patient will receive a breath every 6 seconds. That is fine if the patient is paralyzed, for example, under neuromuscular blockade, particularly in the operating room. This is an example of time triggering. Pause for a moment. What mode of ventilation is this and what is the respiratory rate? Well, because flow is constant in the top scalar, it must be volume control. And as expiration does not immediately follow the end of inspiration, there is an inspiratory pause and the ventilator is time cycling. You can see here that inspiration lasts one second and expiration lasts two seconds. The inspired to expired time ratio is one to two. As the cycle is three seconds, the respiratory rate is 60 divided by three, which equals 20 breaths per minute. So in this situation, the patient is getting 20 breaths per minute, one second of inspiration, two seconds of expiration, and the I to E ratio is one to two. In order for a patient to synchronize with the ventilator, there must be a mechanism for them to trigger a breath. On early ventilators, the patient's negative airway pressure was recorded in some way by the ventilator, and if the magnitude of the negative pressure deflection was within the trigger window, a breath was delivered. So in other words, when the patient generates negative pressure in their pleura and then within their airway with respect to PEEP, there is a drop in the pressure within the vent circuit. This is monitored by the ventilator, and if the pressure drops to a pre-specified level, the ventilator will trigger a breath. In this example, we see a negative pressure sensitivity of minus two centimeters of water. The problem with this is that it requires quite a substantial effort to generate negative pressure that can be measured at the Y, that's where the endotracheal tube connects to the vent circuit. Hence, alternative trigger mechanisms have been developed, particularly flow by triggering and NAVA, which is neurally assisted uh, triggering, which will I, I will not be covering in this tutorial. But this was the original way the ventilators uh, assisted um, patients with triggering negative pressure. Um, now, pressure triggers are on most ventilators, and I'm just going to give you the example of the servo eye ventilator. Um, you can see here, this is the little picture that you'll see on a servo eye ventilator. The trigger pressure is minus two centimeters of water, and that can be between zero and minus 20. The greater the negative number, the harder it is for the patient to trigger. And when you look at the um, waveform, uh, the pressure waveform on the servo ventilator, you'll see that the patient is triggering on the pressure side by a little bit of a purple um, line that's seen on the negative pressure deflection. Modern ventilators, though, tend to be 
flow triggered rather than negative pressure triggered. Now, negative pressure trigger is, is available on all of them, but most of the time we use flow by or flow triggering. And it's a really clever way of resolving the problem. And in these ventilators, these modern ventilators, a constant flow of gas travels around the respiratory circuit and it's known as the base flow. Um, the operator then sets an additional flow on top of that. That's known as the, the combination is the base flow plus the additional flow is known as the bias flow. Uh, and that's above the level. And the, that, that bias flow, it really det is determined by how strong the patient's bellow strength is. Flow in and out of the system is measured by the ventilator. And when the bias flow falls down to the base flow level, the ventilator identifies loss of gas. It must have gone into the patient's lungs or elite, and the breath is triggered. So let's just look at this. Flow travels around the circuit. It's around and around the circuit. This runs, for example, maybe 1.5 liters per minute. Um, this is the base flow. And additionally, we add a flow level to this. And on some ventilators, for example, the Puritan Bennett ventilators, this is called the V-sense, the volume sense. Uh, and this can be two to five liters additionally. You might set it, for example, at three liters. You'll see this in a lot of my illustrations. This is set at three liters in our ICU. Um, and the V-sense plus the base flow is the bias flow through the system. So for example, if you set three liters of um, V-sense here, the and the base flow is 1.5 liters, then the whole bias flow is 4.5 liters. So this is a picture of um, the Puritan Bennett 980 ventilator, and you can see here that the base flow is always to uh, 1.5 liters. Above this is the flow sensitivity, the V sense, and um, that you can see there in the image, right there. Uh, and the bias flow is the base flow plus the V sense. And how much is that? It's 4.5 liters. Now, this is how flow by triggering works. If the patient takes a breath, the return flow will be lower than the outflow and the recovered flow is less than the bias flow and the ventilator will trigger a breath. Now you can set this up in different ways. In this cartoon, we have two scenarios. Um, on the left, the flow is two liters, and on the right, the flow is five liters. If the flow is low, that's for example, a, a, a V-sense of two liters, a small breath will have a major impact and it is much easier to trigger the ventilator. So a patient who is partially paralyzed, is very weak or neuropathic, if they're really struggling to trigger the ventilator, you're gonna set that number right down. So you might start with three, but you might dial it down to two, you might dial it down to one, you might turn it off completely and just use the base flow. And um, if the flow is high, for example, five liters, a small breath will have a minimal impact and it's much harder to trigger. So for someone who, for example, is over triggering the ventilator, is getting loads of breaths because, for example, they may have big movements in their chest from a large heart that keeps pumping up and down, and you might want to make it a little bit more difficult for the patient to breathe. So you're going to set that V-sense up to five liters, for example, and really make it difficult for the patient to trigger a breath. So if the patient is weak, the number is low. If the patient is strong, the number is high. And this is really Really easy to get your head around. So for example, uh, a really strong guy who's taking big breaths, put it up to four or five liters. This is fine on the Puritan Bennett ventilators and a lot of the other products on the market. Unfortunately, if you use the Servo I ventilator, well, this is completely different. Um, the Servo I ventilator is a wonderful machine, but it is really confusing with regard to how flow by works. Um, first of all, the base flow is always two liters per minute or 33 mils per second. Remember I said the Puritan Bennett ventilators, it's 1.5 on the servo, it's two liters. Now each number of the flow trigger, if you go back to that previous picture, you see the trigger flow was five. Um, each number corresponds to 10% of bias flow. So to trigger a breath, that percentage of bias flow needs to be deflected. Zero means 100% and 10 meets means 1%. So the lower the number, the harder it is for the patient to, um, to trigger the ventilator. So they have to work 
harder to get um, the ventilator trigger. So one, two, three, um, very, 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 very hard. Uh, 10 easier, 20, 30, etc. The higher number, the more sensitive the trigger. And so the base setting here will be five, which is one liter in addition to, um, to the, the base flow. So here we have a trigger flow of five. Now here afterwards, I've turned the trigger up to seven. So if I change to seven from five, will it make triggering easier or harder on the servo ventilator? Well, the number seven is a lower percentage of bias flow, right? So the higher the number, the lower percentage of bias flow, bias flow needs to be deflected. That is 30%. So it is actually easier for the patient to breathe the higher the number, exactly the opposite of what happens in the Puritan Bennett ventilators. So the servo wire, the higher the number, the easier it is to breathe, the lower the number, the harder it is to breathe. This is the screen of the servo wire. You can see up here, there's a little purple T that indicates that the patient is triggering. And you can see here, this little purple upstroke on the flow waveform means that the patient is flow triggering. So that is flow by triggering. Let's review this tutorial. Mechanical ventilators cycle to inspiration or they trigger by time, usually when they're on controlled modes. They can, the patient can trigger the ventilator themselves in one of two ways. Um, the first way is negative pressure um, triggering. This is the conventional approach um, that's been used for many decades. Since about the 1990s, flow by triggering has been more popular for conventional ventilation. I did mention there is neurally assisted triggering, but that is not something I'm gonna cover in this part of the course. Next time, I will discuss cycling to expiration. We look at both volume and time cycling and then introduce the concept of flow cycling associated with pressure support ventilation. Don't forget to move on to the next tutorial and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube.